Van Gogh's life was really a disaster. He was depressed many, many times. The only person that he managed to be in love was a whore. He even cut off his own ear, as you may know. And after all that shit, that's how leftist activists treat his works. anyway it's not the main topic of this video the thing that i would like to talk about is that to achieve something you have to suffer and you have to be focused on one specific thing just look at van gogh he was born in the south netherlands he was the second child in the family the first died when he was only a few months old and his name was also vincent so when they walked to the graveyard van gogh could see a tombstone with his own name on it as a young man vincent pursued various careers but always found himself out of sync he worked in an art dealership in london but he was terrible at this. For example, when he had to sell a painting that he doesn't like, he would discourage a potential owner. After this, he moved to Belgium and became a priest. He was kicked from a church because he lived with poor families near the mine and they said to him that his living conditions are too poor to be a priest. When it comes to art, at first it wasn't really popular. He saw the world in a very emotional way, which was different from what most people liked at the time. His early artworks were sad and dark, showing poor people and unhappy places who didn't like his rough style and didn't pay much attention to it however what's more interesting is vincent's personal life his first love was his cousin who rejected him plus she said vincent was disgusting after being brutally rejected he went to the pub where he got to know a prostitute who already had a child and despite this van gogh decided to live with her vincent's brother theo was very important to him theo appreciated vincent's talent and helped him both emotionally and financially in their letters they showed their deep love for each other but vincent also talked about his struggles with feeling sad and unsure of himself i mean it's completely understandable imagine being 30 and not having a job not selling any of your work and living off your brother's money it shows amazing brotherhood that is really really rare today vincent moved to arles in the south of france hoping things would get better but while he was there he had an argument with another artist paul gauguin and ended up cutting off part of his own ear before he met gauguin he spent months lonely and what is also interesting in this place in france there's a wild called mistral which literally makes people go crazy this was a sign that vincent's mental health was getting worse on the other hand it was the best period for his art he painted an enormous amount of paintings at the time he sacrificed himself for the art he was eating literally only bread and drinking only coffee his vibrant thrilling and vividly colored paintings while hailed as masterpieces today were largely dismissed in his time his starry nights, sunflowers and self-portraits, all painted during moments of extreme personal crisis, showcased his ability to convert agony into beauty. Despite brief periods of stability, Vincent's mental health continued to decline. He went through times of intense painting and times of feeling very unwell. Finally, in 1890, Vincent took off his own life. And this is the part that we shouldn't follow. But of course, we should learn from the rest. Imagine sacrificing your whole life, I'm talking family, relationships, health, to one skill and sell only one painting for only 400 francs during his lifetime. People started to appreciate his works decades after he died. Well, I guess that you would like to receive results of your work in life, but it also requires years of sacrifice. And here is the problem. Today, people can't commit to one type of work for longer than a few days, so they can't so they can't really expect success. I mean, it's kind of obvious, but if you don't think that focusing on one thing is the key to the, the success, apart from Van Gogh example, here's Alex Homorzy, multi-millionaire, explaining this. What is the most overrated piece of advice? There's two, I gotta, I gotta pick two. At least in the US, there's this like, the average millionaire has seven streams of income. Right? Like, <laughs> yeah. Everyone like yeah. retweets this as though, it's, as though it's fact, and it's just like, so silly for a variety of reasons. First one is that the way someone gets somewhere is not how they end up. So Mark Cuban, has a zillion different income streams, but he made his billion with one. It's completely irrelevant what they're doing because what matters is how they got there. And that's why yeah. I think that quote is just such a farce. The other reason on a tactical level is that most people have a very difficult time staying focused and it takes an inordinate amount of effort to be successful at anything. Mm -hmm. And to assume that you have so much talent that you can that you can put one tenth of your attention into 10 things and then somehow compete against somebody who's going all in on that one thing, is just a huge ego thing in my opinion. And it shows a lack of clarity, right? It's just like the whole idea of uh, I'm gonna do all these things and see which one works is so ridiculous because they'll all work but not at the same time. 
And so you yeah. just have to pick one. So I think that this is really a key to the success. If you will do one thing over the next year consistently, you will suddenly become an expert. And whether it's making YouTube videos like me or learning math or starting an agency, I can guarantee you that in one year, if you sacrifice to this task and if you will constantly improve at the craft, and of course, I mean, sometimes you will feel like not doing it. He went through all this shit that I've told you, but he was still painting. You will have to fight yourself, but after some time, I guarantee you that you will be rich. It's just how it works. One more thing that is interesting about Van Gogh, at the age of 28, so saying that it's too late is also not an excuse. Honestly, I'm probably same as you starting my journey, so it would be great if you will comment what I can improve in my videos. And also, if you want to surround yourself with like-minded people, join Discord from the description. And yeah, see you in the next week.